It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. Uh, so we'll, we'll break up the podcast a little bit. Um, we're, we're sort of moving down the ladder. We've discussed the top four race, but um, maybe we can talk about some uh, current events. This is a little bit current. It's a couple of weeks old now also, maybe one week old. But we've lost our second coach for the year, Bush. Yep. Leon Cameron first, now David Noble. Yep. Uh, what did you think about this? Did you, I mean, I'm sure to some degree you saw it coming, but did you, did you think the timing was a bit weird? Maybe? A little, but I think because they brought in that investigation and the investiga- mm. once they'd got the results of the investigation, that was just sort of yeah. like... <laughs> that sounds so sinister. Yeah, investigation's <laughs> probably... Well, what was the... Yeah, investigation's Re- on Yeah, review's review, the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. review's the <laughs> more... <laughs> investigation has so many more negative <laughs> connotations. <laughs> but yeah, like the review sort of showed like... And it sounds like there was issues with the way he interacted with players. Like mm. The thing is with David Noble, I think, because he was the head of football or whatever at Brisbane before he got this job, I think he's probably better suited to maybe being that behind like the list management strategic yeah strategic side of thing rather than being the day-to-day guy that deals with the players Mm. based on what you're hearing reported about him at least yeah it is hard to argue that it could have gone any worse for north they finished last last year they're currently last on the ladder now and for most of this season have been really uncompetitive Uh, the only reason i thought the timing was a little weird was because i thought gee North nearly beat off, Col- uh, beat off Col- <laughs> <laughs> They nearly, um, yeah. <laughs> Strange tactic, but nearly worked. Um, they nearly pipped Collingwood. It was almost a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I thought that was, wow, that was a real good demonstration of what this group is capable of. In, in Noble's defence, I think he's also working with the list management decisions that Reece Shaw and that and co made. Uh, and he sort of inherited a list yeah. that is very young. Mm. And, you know... Who are the mature top liners at North? Like Aaron Hall. Yeah. Zebul. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, even, yeah. I don't think that stacks up well yeah. against even some bottom sides. So, um, and that's no disrespect to them. It's more like Zebul's in the twilight of his career, yeah. as is Cunnington. Obviously, he's been going through health issues. Um, and, and so the, the next group that they're looking for is that. 22 to 24 year old yeah, you Sim can LDU dudes yeah yeah. And, yeah and you know what they've shown really good form this year but they don't have a lot of support like they are doing a lot yeah. um, and they've cut a lot of experience and time will tell that that may pay off in the long run I guess my only point is Noble had to contend with a very inexperienced <laughs> list yeah um, so that it's tough to get a read on him um, but in terms of wins and losses and general performance yeah I think I saw like the stats for like all time win loss records it was like the worst ever mm. or something yeah, so that's yeah. that's a little harsh because he's just inherited yeah. that list. But an interesting know. one, bloody Bolton was top five for worst records ever, and he had a pretty long crack True. as the current coach, but he was still top five worst records as a coach ever. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so on that though, the wooden spoon race um, is heating up, Bush. I know spoon bowl. this is the real hot topic. I know everyone was getting past the top four race. Yeah, all yeah. right, sick. That part of the podcast is done. Let's talk about who might win the wooden spoon <laughs> because I'm um, being facetious, but in all seriousness, it, I've gone from being confident we wouldn't win it to now thinking we probably will on the basis of North's fortnight. Mm. Uh, the football they've displayed against Collingwood and Richmond and, and shut them down at times and obviously struggled to run out all four quarters in both games, but um, or at least play for four quarters in, the, in both games. But the top football, I think, has surpassed anything West Coast has produced this year. And I think West Coast have been really improved over the f- last five weeks. So um, we'll go through the runs home. So North have Hawthorne, Essendon, so two bottom five-ish sides, yeah. bottom six sides. Uh, and then a tough run with Sydney and Frio and then the Suns. But uh, by contrast, West Coast have St Kilda this week, who are a little bit vulnerable. Still, we think St Kilda would win that. Gold Coast away, Fremantle, Adelaide and Geelong. So I think it's almost at the point that if one team wins one more game for the rest uh, of the year, they're going to avoid the wooden spoon. And the form North showing right now, and West Coast have had a couple of key injuries as well. I think North are more likely to avoid the spoon than we yeah. are, um, which is just great. Do you have a particular opinion on those? It's teams? tough because you... Could say North Pip in one of those Essendon Hawthorne games, maybe. Mm. Hawthorne and Essendon are playing all right at the moment. Yeah. Like Hawthorne played pretty well against us, but then they're they're a little bit more bipolar. Whereas Essendon yeah. have genuinely turned their form around. Yeah. They have genuinely been good. They've won 
four of the last five, I think. Something like that. And beaten some good quality teams in that in mm. that mix as well. Um, so, yeah, it'll be better team on the day. But I think North have the ability to beat Hawthorne this week mm. because of the form they're currently playing with. Yeah. And shout out to Luke Davies Uniac as well. His last five, 33, yep. 17, 35, 33, and 28. Ooh. A player that we've been waiting to come on yeah. for quite some time in a side without a lot of support. And he is not only getting plenty of the football, but he's like showing his explosive attributes and, yeah. and looking really good. So um, there may be some positives out of this year for North after all, yeah. especially if they get a priority pick. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that they bid today for yeah, I saw an, it, uh, yeah, an application? Yeah. So uh, I will get up on my phone. So we did talk about this at length last time about, you know, what is a priority pick and, and, and should yeah. they get one? So we'll expand on that a little bit. So an article today, I'll, um, I'll paraphrase, um, that the, f- the last clubs to receive priority pick assistance, uh, there was Gold Coast in 2019, mm. and they were given picks one and 20 in the 2019 draft. So that was when they got Raul and Anderson. Oh, yeah. Yep. Then they were given pick 11 in the following draft. And Flanders, pick- wasn't it? Yes, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Um, I think it was Flanders. I feel like the Flanders, did, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was certainly around there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and twenty nineteen in uh, sorry, pick nineteen in twenty twenty one. So they got Which four they draft picks us. then. Yes, four draft picks then, and pick mm-hmm. one is one of them. The three first rounders. Uh, that had come after the Suns had secured just seven wins from the previous two seasons. I think North is sitting on about six. Something like that. Uh. Uh, and then had also gone nine campaigns without September action. When was the last time North made the finals? I want to say... Somewhere in the teens. So, so 15, they made a prelim. Yeah. And then 16, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know if they fell off the cliff like we did in 16 or if it took them another year. It could might have took them another year to fall off the cliff. Yeah. Well, we, So we're talking about five yeah. years plus, I'd say. Yeah. Then uh, in 2018, Carlton received an assistance package and all they got was two state league players in 2018. They'd won eight games in two years and gone five uh, seasons without football. That's a huge uh, difference in assistance, isn't it? Yeah, they're biased towards because they're really trying to get Gold Coast going mm. and try and make. That's it pretty viable. blatant, yeah. though. Like when I didn't realise yeah. that sure. until I saw it mapped out. Like four first round mm. picks versus two state league team players. Yeah. Who they even get? I can't even. Gibbons remember. and someone. Yes, Gibbons was one of them. God. So yeah, we're seeing the inequities of our league. Here. Uh, Meanwhile, Brisbane in 2016 received uh, pick 19 after winning seven games in two years. So we're talk- they'd gone seven years without finals. So between those three, similar performances, mm. very three very different ways of yeah. being compensated. So I actually have no idea what to expect with North. Melbourne. I think based on what all that information, I'd say if you're going to give North one this year, it should be 19. Mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I could tolerate that, but yeah. obviously I've got a vested interest in this as an Eagles fan. But yeah. if North get picked one and twenty, yeah. not happy about it. And mm. it's it's part of that is because it's subjective and it's just yeah. you know them coming up with an arbitrary process, and it's going to be based around you know how well equipped mm. North are to come back. And yeah. that's where I, I think know. nineteen seems fair because they've shown that they've got a bit of upside in the yeah. team at this point. Since we get to be subjective, we've seen the last couple yeah. of weeks since they've sacked Noble. I'm okay with a nineteen's with, okay. I think. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Especially because they could flip it for something as well. Like it's a very tradable asset. Yes. The first pick of the second round because you get that night between the first round mm. and the second round, so they can suss teams go. Oh, that kid we loved slipped, so we yeah. can send two seconds or whatever. I'm okay with a with a priority pick system. Like I can tolerate. I don't love it. Um, I'm a bit more capitalist in that sense mm. like every man for himself but I think the the arbitrary part of it really fucks me off yeah, to be honest you need it to be consistent P- criteria when as we just saw it mapped out the, the three ways the teams were rewarded were completely different so I'll, I'll, we'll let the comments suggest as well what's what would be fair 